Can I build e-commerce stores in Framer? Well, today the answer is yes, because in this video, I'm gonna teach you how you can connect your Shopify store to Framer so you can build e-commerce sites finally inside of Framer with zero code. Let's go. So here we are inside a Framer project. And as you can probably tell, I've already taken some steps to actually design what our store might look like, but nothing is functional and there's no content in here either. So the first thing we wanna do is actually create the connection between Shopify and Framer itself. Now I have this Shopify store set up here with a bunch of products, with variants, and just everything you would come to know with a Shopify store. Now I'm gonna go down to the left-hand side here and I'm gonna click on apps and we're going to go to app and sales channel settings. In here, we're gonna click develop apps and we're going to create a new legacy app. Now we can call this whatever we want. Let's call it my framer connection and we'll click on create app. Now what we wanna do is actually configure our storefront API scopes. So this is essentially deciding what information we wanna send from Shopify to framer. Now it's important that we get this right. So we need to check unauthenticated write checkouts and unauthenticated read checkouts. We also need to enable unauthenticated read product listings, unauthenticated read product inventory, and also unauthenticated read product tags. Great, now let's click on save. And now we can click on install app and we'll just press install. Okay, awesome. Now let's go back to Framer and we'll come back to Shopify in just a hot minute. So to actually enable the connection between Shopify and Framer and to add e-commerce functionality to our website, we're gonna utilize the Frameship plugin. So I'm gonna go down to plugins at the bottom here. I'm going to open Frameship. So when I open the Frameship plugin, I'm gonna click on get started and we're going to complete this little onboarding guide here. So I'm going to select that I'm a designer and we're going to select start from scratch. And now I'm going to go connect an existing store. Now, in order to connect our store, we need two things. We need the Shopify store URL and we also need a storefront API access token, which if we go back to Shopify here, you'll see that we can grab our storefront API access token from this app that we've just developed. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that back into my project here. And we also need the Shopify store URL. So you normally can find that at the top left of your Shopify. So I'm just going to copy that here and I'm going to paste this back into my project. Now I'm going to click on connect my store and then that's it. So now all I need to do is go to the Framer CMS, actually create a new collection list so I can sync that data across. So we'll go to Framer here and we'll actually go to import a new collection and we'll open the Frameship plugin once again. Now you can call this whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it my store and we'll click on create. Now, if we have some custom fields that we actually want to bring across from Shopify, we can connect that here. But in most cases, you should just be totally fine with the default options. And let's actually press on sync products. And just like that, you can see that now my Shopify data is now inside my frame CMS, which means I can bring it onto the canvas. And it's pulling everything from the tags, the collection types, the SEO, even the Shopify data itself, as well as variant information. Now, while that's all great, we still need to make it functional so someone can actually interact with our store and buy our products. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually create a new CMS detail page here for my store collection that we've created. And we'll create that as a detail page. And you'll start to see that all that information from Shopify is being pulled over here. Now, I'm actually just gonna delete everything on the canvas just for a hot minute. And I actually have a page template set up. So I'm just going to enable that here. And since I've already taken some steps to design a product detail page, I'm actually just gonna copy across the content that I have existingly. So we'll just create a couple of breakpoints here to make sure it's responsive. And then I'll paste in my content. Great. Now, since this is a CMS detail page, we can actually connect content on this page to my CMS collection, which is also my Shopify data. So for example here, the title, if I click on my title here and then go down to a little plus inside the properties panel, I can set the variable to be, well, my title. And now you'll notice as I kind of go through each product, it's going to update just like so. 
We can also do the same with the image here. So if I wanted to set the fill to be my image, I could set that to be say image number one. And then as I kind of go through, all that will update. So let's actually go ahead here and update the tag here as well. So we might set this to be the category and I kind of have a bit of a breadcrumb menu here as well. So we'll just also set that to be the title. Okay, so very quickly, you can see that my page is starting to be a little bit more functional, but we're still missing some core e-commerce functionality. Now, this is where the Frameship plugin comes in handy again. So what I'm actually going to do is open the Frameship plugin once again. And if we actually click on components here, you'll see there's actually a wide variety of components that we can utilize. Everything from our product pages to adding a cart or even working with our catalog pages where we can add things like markets or even dynamic filtering. Now I have a few different things that I'll need to add in here. For example, we'll need an add to cart button. We might wanna show the amount of inventory that's left as well as the price. So let's actually start with price here and let's just drag that onto my page. And let's actually put this inside this little card here. And let's actually just tweak the styling of this as well. So let's set it to be left aligned. Let's remove the strikeout price. Now, the important thing to note about these Frameship components is one, they're all super customizable, so you can find everything within the properties panel here. But two, some of these components actually connect directly to Shopify's data, which means it's going to update dynamically when the page loads. So anytime we see a field here inside the component, which says connect this to a Shopify data variable from the CMS, it's really important that we can do this. So this data is actually being fetched from Shopify itself. So you'll notice that when I actually connect that data there, the price updates to $29, which is the price of my product. And if I switch products, you'll notice that updates here as well. Meaning that if I update the price in say Shopify, it's automatically going to be updated on the canvas here as well. So let's actually reposition this just a little bit and have it underneath my uh, ratings here. So let's add some more components here. Let's add an inventory label. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that onto the page. And let's also go ahead here and add the add to cart button. Cool, so let's start with the inventory label. Again, we need to connect this to our Shopify data field. And same with the add to cart button, we need to make sure we can add that here as well. And I've got all the options to tweak my settings here too. But for now, let's actually just make this button a little bit bigger, let's say 50 pixels in height. And let's actually move it to the bottom here. And then I think stock status can actually go underneath the price. So we'll just put that there. And actually let's put it inside here and let's change the distribute to be horizontal and then we'll set the alignment to be to the left. Okay, so when I preview this, you can see this is looking pretty good and it pulls in my information dynamically. But when I click add to cart, nothing yet happens. And that's because we haven't actually added the cart itself. So I actually have this navbar component set up here and I'm just gonna open that. And then I'm going to open Frameship once again. And we'll go to cart here and we're actually gonna drag in this core cart component. So I'm just gonna put that on the canvas here. And let's actually put it inside our navbar. And let's make sure it goes at the far left here inside this stack. And there's a bit of an overflow issue. So let's make sure that overflow is set to be visible. Okay, great. So now we have this cart component here and I can actually just double click this and go unlink and replace all. And you notice this is just like a normal sort of component, but it's got a few extra things attached to it. So for example, if I actually want to customize the icon of this cart, I could do that here, as well as what the actual cart looks like when it's opened. So when I open this, I could tweak the styling of a lot of these different elements if I want to truly customize what my store looks like. But that's basically it. We just need to make sure that we have that cart component on the canvas. So when I actually preview this and go add to cart, you'll notice that cart will open. Now, one of the important things to note about using the Frameship plugin is because it's using a lot of dynamic data, not everything will work in the preview. But if I actually go and publish my website here, so you will notice we're on the actual website. And then if I go to the actual page, you will notice that if I click on add to cart, it's actually going to function correctly. And then I could add as many items as these as I want and the price will dynamically update. And then when I actually go to checkout, it's gonna take me directly to that checkout experience inside my Shopify store.
So we're making some good progress so far. Now let's actually go a little bit further and customize our site a little bit more. Now there are a ton of different components here, but let's say we actually wanna utilize variants. How would we actually do this? Well, if we go to product inside the Frameship components catalog, and then let's actually go down here to variant image switch, and let's actually drag this in here. Now, what I need to do is connect a few different fields here. So we're going to connect the Shopify data field. We're gonna connect this one to variant image mapping. And lastly, variant options. So let's take this men's court polo product, for example. You'll notice we've got a few different variants set up from the color as well as the size. So when I connect this component inside a framer, it's gonna pull through all the different filters that it has. So what we're actually going to do is set the filter type to be contain, and I'm gonna change this to be color. And now you'll see that we get a visual reference for each one of those variants. Now we can also drag in the variant info label here so we can actually see what variant is selected. So I'll connect this to be my Shopify data. And since we want this variant to actually show the variant name, we'll just display that here. So now you'll notice that when I preview my site, when I actually change a variant here, it's actually updating the actual color of the variant here. So when I go add to cart, that's going to be pulled across correctly. Now let's actually group these inside their own frame and let's set the alignment to be to the left and let's call it our variant holders. Because the other thing we need to do, especially if it's a shirt, is we need size. So again, I'll go back to the Frameshift plugin. I'll go down to products and we'll actually drag in the variant selector. So we'll put that in here. And just like before, I want to connect my fields here. So Shopify data, variant image mapping, and then variant options. And you'll notice it's pulling through everything, but that's all right because we can actually filter it to just be size. So now you'll notice when I preview this, not only can I select a color, but I can also select the size as well. So this can get really powerful, but it goes even further. So for example, we have this image on the left-hand side here, but maybe we want to dynamically update this image based on the variant that's been selected. So this is where we can actually use a gallery component, in particular, the smart image gallery here. So I'm just gonna drag this onto my page just for a second, and we'll paste this into where my image was. So we'll put that in here. And let's actually get rid of that. Set the width of this to be fill. And let's keep the height around 630 pixels. And now let's go ahead and connect our Shopify data. And then we also need to connect the fields for all of our images. So we'll go through here quickly. We'll set that to be image one, image two, image three. I think you get the idea. We'll just keep going. Cool. So now when I actually preview this, you'll see that we actually get a preview of that actual image inside of our Shopify store, which we can switch between. But also if we select a variant here, so say if I want to show the green colored shirt, you will notice it's going to dynamically update on our store as well. So if I set it to be white, we'll just show the images here that have to do with that white variant. So let's publish this once again. And let's go to our website. So now you can see everything is working as expected. I can select a size, I can select a color, and you'll also notice that the stock inventory level is updating based on my Shopify data. So let's say I want a green shirt in a medium size. I can see there's 20 in stock. And then when I go to actually add that to my cart, you'll see that it adds correctly here. Now, like I mentioned, there is a lot you can do here and e-commerce stores are quite big. And this is just a very simple look at how you can add e-commerce functionality to your website. But since this is a CMS collection, you can actually do whatever you want, just like you would in Framer, from designing all your product pages to even building your collection list so someone can actually discover all your products in a really nice way. Even the card experience you can fully customize. There's even the ability to use markets. So if you want to show different prices based on someone's location, you can do that as well. And I think this is a really great solution, especially for people who want to build Shopify e-commerce stores, but they don't want to deal with developers and they want the Framer experience all with zero code. I'll leave a link to Frameship down below so you can try it out for yourself. If you enjoyed this video and you want more Framer content just like this one, consider subscribing to the channel because we're putting out new tutorials every single week. And if you are interested in using the plugin in this video, I'll leave a link 
down below. But until next time, I'll catch you later.